Hey guys, I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a basic shield. Now, in this video, uh, I'm going to be doing the modeling, UV unwrapping, and texturing, but the video is going to be broken into two parts. The first will be the modeling and the UV unwrapping, which will essentially look like my standard tutorial with me down here in the corner. And then when we get to the texturing, I'm going to be doing a time lapse and a commentary over that time lapse, just so you can see the texturing and hear my texture process, because we are doing hand painted models in this basic weapon series. So with that in mind, let's get started. Okay, so to start with our basic shield, all we have to do is select everything with A and then hit X to delete it. Then we can take a look at the front orthographic view, which we get to by hitting one on our keypad. From there, shift A and add in a plane. Now the plane is added in by default horizontally. So what we wanna do is go down to the operator panel and then change the rotation on the X axis to 90 degrees. It'll give us the front of our shield, which is what you know the enemy would see if you were defending yourself. From here, you can basically create any shield type. You just have to figure out what shape of the shield you wanna go with. So for that, I recommend grabbing the grease pencil tool. Now, if you were creating a circular shield, you wouldn't necessarily start with a uh, plane. You would start with a circle and just fill it in, but we're gonna do a rectangular version. So let me just quickly just sketch out some lines here and say our shield is going to look something like this. Maybe like that. I can switch back to my select brush and hit tab to enter into edit mode. We're going to add a mirror modifier to our plane here, and that will allow us to simply have to work on one side of the model. But we want to make sure that everything stays to the center here. So we'll turn on clipping on the mirror modifier and hit G and X to move those vertices back to the center. From here, we're going to grab these, hit GZ and position that vertex up there and then GZ to position it right about there. And then we can hit Control R to grab the loop cut and we're gonna add in, let's say two loop cuts and we'll just position those right about there to line up with where our shield is gonna go in a little bit. And we'll loop cut again, grab two more and move these in on the X axis. Now, if we don't like where this is actually positioned, we can stretch these out a bit by hitting uh, GG, which will slide our vertices down so grab the edge, hit GG, and slide it up. And then because we want the curve here, we're going to add in just another loop cut and move this down. All right, from here down at the bottom, we can hit E to extrude and try to bring it along the line. Now, it doesn't have to match the line perfectly. Again, we can add in loop cut and then select an edge and pull it out. And that's basically all there is to creating a shield. Now we've moved this up a little bit and we're gonna position that down, but we still have a quad face here. From this point, we have a single flat plane. So let's go ahead and add a solidify modifier. Once we've got the solidify modifier, we can change the thickness to let's just say 0.1 and that will give us our shield shape. Now shields are rounded, they're not flat because if you're gonna defend yourself, especially with this type of shield, you don't want a sword strike or a spear strike to basically hit directly onto your shield. You want it to bounce off a little bit. So what we're gonna do, we'll just grab these center vertices here and hit G and Y to move them a little bit forward on the Y axis, which gives us a little bit of a slanted angle here for our shield, which is gonna be better for us in the long run, especially if we wanna use this shield to stay alive. Okay, now what I like to do at this point is create a backup for myself, so that way in the event that I don't like what I've created, I can always go back to when I've completed the basic shape of my model. And since the basic shape is done, we'll just go ahead, hit Shift D to duplicate, and then go up to the outliner and change this to Shield Backup. And at that point, we might as well name the original model Shield. Now we can create a new collection, call it Backups, and move the shield back up into that and then hide that collection so that way we don't actually see it. But in the event that we mess this up and we wanna go back and fix it or if we want to create variations on a theme, we still have the backup, uh, the original model backup that we can go for. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and create a uh, like a rim, like a metal rim that would go around the outside. So for that, we'll hit Control R 
and move this kind of close to the edge. Then we'll come down to the operator panel and check the even box. Now, if we don't like how close that made it, we can scoot this back a little bit to give us a thickness. But if we check on even, it's going to make it so that the vertex is moved relative to the size of the edge that it's currently on. So with that said, that's gonna give us our uh, angle here. We have negative 0.736, but that's not gonna be the same because what we wanna do here is create one at the top. And here at the bottom, we will uncheck the even just so that way um, we can get a straighter line going across. Okay, and the last step before we apply on any modifiers is to simply create a new face. So we have this edge going down here and we want to maintain the uh, distance. So what we can actually do here is change our annotation brush. Let's go to that and we'll change that from normal annotate to annotate line. And then we can kind of line up and we wanna go across the X axis here. So we know where we're going to place that vertex and it's gonna be right about there, which is good. So then we can extrude off a vertex right towards here. That should be fine. And we can do the same thing with here. Hit W to go back to our select brush. Select here and extrude off and line that up. Now that that's lined up, we can select both of these and hit F. Now that only works if you have the F2 modifier on, which is an add-on for free that you can do by going to edit and preferences. But if you don't have it on, um, you know, I would recommend installing it. But if you don't have it on, you would have to grab all of those vertices there in order to create that new face. And then we'll grab this final triangle here and hit fill. Now what that allows us to do is have a solid edge going all the way around from the top to the bottom that we can then extrude out. Okay, so we're almost ready to apply our modifiers, but we have one last thing that we need to get rid of. And that is this line right here. And if we don't get rid of that, we're going to see some weird things when we apply our mirror modifier and solidify modifier. So we're gonna just select the line by hitting Alt Select and then dissolve the edge. Now that's gonna give us a perfect representation of what we needed, but we see that it comes out just a little far. So let's hit G and Y to move this back a little bit on the Y axis. All right, I'm happy with that. And let's go ahead and apply our modifiers. Now you wanna make sure that you are applying them in the order that they appear because they might not get the result that you're looking for if you apply them in the wrong order. So we'll apply the mirror modifier first and then the solidify modifier. And that generates a mesh that looks like this. For the last step here, we're gonna to switch to face select by hitting three on the top of our keyboard and selecting this top edge loop and the side edge loop. So Alt Shift Select there will allow you to select those faces. The last part is to deselect these top selected faces and then go to our extrude tool, change it from extrude to region to extrude along normals and pop it out a bit. Now you can get in there and bevel that if you want to, but I'm not going to. And I'm actually going to consider this completely modeled, and it's time to move on to UV unwrapping. All right, so in order to UV unwrap this, let's select the object and go to the UV editing tab. From here, I wanna turn on stretching. So in the UV editor, hit the N key to bring up your uh, properties panel, go to view, overlays, and then stretching. Now we want to also change the type from angle to area because that'll show us how the faces are actually stretched and since the faces are what we're applying texture to it matters more than the angle stretching that is the default. So we can see that we are in a bright green area which is not good for stretching. So let's select everything and you can kind of see how it's been unwrapped which is not good and we can go ahead and keep the UV selection in sync. From here, I wanna to go to my 3D model section, hit U and turn on Live Unwrap. And what this will do is allow you to see the new UV map every time you add a new scene. So for example, let's switch to Edge Select here and 
alt select this edge going along the inside, which grabs us everything but these top edges, but we'll go ahead and grab those as well. And then right click and mark a seam. From there, you can see that our UV map has updated. And you can unwrap this in basically any way that you want, but I feel the best way to do this would be to unwrap the back and the front faces and then unwrap the rim. And that will simply be time-lapsed. Okay, so you can see over here on the left, most of our shield is fully unwrapped, completely blue. If we wanted to, we could get in here a little bit more and unwrap these a little further. But for the point of our basic shield, which is just going to be hand painted, this is good enough. So for the rest of the video, I'm going to disappear and we're going to get commentary and a time lapse over hand painting. So thanks for watching. All right, so what I'm doing right here is known as paint masking, and this is essentially where you only paint on the faces that you have selected currently in edit mode. So to turn that on, just jump into edit mode, select the faces you want to paint on, and then go back to texture paint and click on that icon that's currently blue on your screen. It's the one right next to where it says texture paint in the upper left hand corner of the texture paint window. Now here, as I was trying to add the base color for the metal outside rim, I realized that I had some faces that were on top of each other, which isn't great. And I probably should have resolved this issue when I was doing the UV layout, but I didn't catch it and well, I had to fix it. So I just dissolved those edges and now I can lay down a base color on the entire shield. Now you notice me using the color palettes over on the right hand side there. And the reason for that is that I don't want to have to recreate colors again and again and again. So having a set color palette that you can pull from one blender file to the next is ridiculously useful. And so actually these color palettes were created for the basic mace video that I did a while back. And I'm just reusing those same colors. Now, when you're hand painting things, you want to look at real reference images for whatever it is you're painting. So not pictured on the screen is my reference image that I had up on my other screen that I'm looking at a real wood texture and trying to mimic that wood texture using darker and lighter colors. This is also why color palettes are a great idea because once you have the base color down, you can essentially move the slider bar on the right hand side of our color wheel and get lighter and darker colors that'll be variations on that base color, which makes texturing things like wood very, very easy because the colors are all going to basically be the same, just lighter or darker versions of each other. And the biggest thing that I've probably learned about hand painting, even though I haven't done a whole lot of it, is that adding in these extra little lines, as well as doing it from a reference, is probably the easiest way to get a real looking texture here. And you can kind of see that it's turning into real wood. It was kind of flat with the lines there. Don't worry, later on we'll actually clean up those lines, make them not as smoothed out. But adding these extra lighter and darker colors is giving a much more real wooden feel to it. And maybe the colors are a little bit off, maybe they're not, maybe your wood wants to look different, that's okay. Whatever you're happy with, that's what you ultimately want to pick your colors for and try to go for reality when you're hand painting.
Now hand painting is a lot of work, and because this took me roughly 30 minutes to hand paint the front of this shield, I didn't really want to spend that much time on the back, redoing a lot of the same work. So instead, I'm going to go back to the UV editor, grab those faces, rotate them around, and drop them on front of the front faces that I've just painted. Now that is a little cheating, but hey, it works. All right, so there we have our basic shield. Now, if you have any questions or comments, or if you'd like to see any different tutorials, you can let me know in the comments down below. And pretty much that's it for this video. So I'm Sir Pinkbeard, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.